The truth is, is that high dividend ETFs are not always the cash cows that we think they are. In this video, we're going over some of the worst ETFs to own right now. If I'm gonna make a claim like that, there has to be a good reason because we can't afford to be wrong. The ETFs in this list made this video because number one, they have a high dividend yield, but the value of the ETF has been steadily declining. Effectively, they're dividend traps. Number two, none of these ETFs are specifically focused on growth. So the fund is losing value and the dividend can't keep up. This is effectively a recipe for losing money. And number three, these ETFs are trading close to or below their 2020 crash levels. What that means is from a price perspective, the market doesn't seem to have a lot of confidence in these ETFs right now. Let's jump into our first ETF, PGX, also known as the Invesco Preferred ETF. This ETF will normally invest in at least 80% of its total assets in fixed rate US dollar denominated preferred securities based on the ICE Bank of America Merrill Lynch Core Plus Fixed Rate Preferred Securities Index. In plain English, this ETF buys preferred shares of companies, specifically in the financial sector. It's important to note the difference between preferred shares and common shares. This ETF buys preferred shares, which means that it gets paid its dividends first compared to owners of common shares. PGX has 295 holdings, and its top holdings are listed below. If you look closely, you'll see that it's largely concentrated in preferred stocks from banks like Citigroup, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America. This ETF has a five-year average yearly return of minus 0.1%, which means if you invested $10,000 five years ago, your investment would now be worth $9,952.55. DGRW has a dividend yield of 5.89% and an expense ratio of 0.51%. Our second ETF is known as KBWD, also known as the Invesco KBW High Dividend Yield Financial ETF. This ETF generally will invest at least 90% of its total assets in the securities of publicly listed financial companies with competitive dividend yields in the United States based on the KBW NASDAQ Financial Sector Dividend Yield Index. In other words, this dividend is highly focused on the financial sector and focused on getting the highest dividend yield possible. KBWD has 42 holdings, and its top holdings are Orchid Island Capital, FSKKR Capital Corp, Chimera Investment Corp, Capsteed Morgan Corp, TCG BDC Inc., New Mountain Finance Corp., Armor Residential REIT Inc., Goldman Sachs BDC Inc., Aries Commercial Real Estate Corp., and Annaly Capital Management. This ETF has a five-year average yearly return of 0.1%. So if you invested $10,000 five years ago, your investment would now be worth $10,000 $48.64. KBWD has a dividend yield of 10.24% and an expense ratio of 2.59%. Our third ETF is QYLD, also known as the NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF. This ETF follows a covered call strategy in which the ETF buys stocks in the NASDAQ 100 index and sells call options using those positions. The ETF is writing call options and collecting a premium on them to generate more returns. QYLD has 103 holdings and its top holdings are all familiar names. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Tesla, Nvidia, and PayPal. You might also see some of its options positions on the holdings as well. This ETF has a five-year average yearly return of 2.72%. So if you invested $10,000 five years ago, your investment would now be worth $11,437.87. KBWD has a dividend yield of 11.85% and an expense ratio of 0.6%. Our fourth and final ETF is SDIV, also known as the Super Dividend ETF. This ETF invests in 100 of the highest dividend yielding equity securities in the world. In other words, this ETF is all about getting the highest dividend possible, and it's willing to go outside of the United States to do it. SDIV has 125 holdings, and its top holdings are listed below. One thing I want you to note is that none of these names are super familiar. Part of that is because of the ETF strategy of collecting the highest dividend possible and willing to get international exposure. This ETF has a five-year average yearly return of minus 10.59%. So that means if you invested $10,000 five years ago, your investment would now be worth $5,730 and 76 cents. SDIV has a dividend yield of 14.25% and an expense ratio of 0.58%. These ETFs might have made more sense to hold during an extended bull market like we've seen in the past, but as far as what's happening right now, we can see that just because an ETF has a very high dividend yield, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to make you money. Some of these ETFs lost money in the past five years, some of these ETFs broke even, and some of these ETFs did manage to make a very small amount of profit. Although given how small that profit actually was, some investors might have been better off just investing in the S&P 500, because maybe there was some room for growth long term. As always, no one can predict what's going to happen in the future. For me personally, these four ETFs aren't the best investments for me in my financial position, knowing what I know based on the research that I've done and based on my goals for the future. So if you're still looking for some solid ETFs for 2023 and beyond, take a look at this video that's popping up on your screen right now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe for more crypto, money, and finance content. I appreciate your time, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.